I must admit there is an element of frustration going into this video because I know that I am barely going to be able to touch on the breadth of this topic. I'm primarily a Nintendo YouTuber. I don't get like a ton of chances to bring up other gaming companies, the greater gaming world. I do when I can, I, I try to squeeze stuff in there. But for many years now, I've had a whole lot of opinions about Xbox. And more than ever, I'm realizing that I absolutely do need to make a greater video on Xbox and put that on the main channel. It's a conversation I've been wanting to have for a very long time now, and um, I think I'm, I'm, I'm basically there. And so now going into this video here, uh, it's, it's such a big topic and it's so frustrating, but I'm going to try my hardest to mainly focus on what happened today. Microsoft just announced that they are shutting down four of their first party studios. This includes somewhat lesser known studios, Roundhouse Studios and Alpha Dog Games, but also two very well known and highly regarded studios, Tango Gameworks and Arcane Austin. And of course, studio closures and humongous rounds of layoffs have become very, very common over the last year or two, but Xbox's place in this, if, if layoffs were like a race, Xbox would be very, very far ahead. And then closing down four studios at once, including two very highly regarded and talented studios, it's, it is, um, it's simply baffling. Xbox executive Matt Booty sent an email to employees giving a bog standard boilerplate baloney explanation for why this is happening. And I guess in this kind of video, you, you read the quote, why not? He says, to double down on these franchises and invest to build new ones requires us to look across the business to identify the opportunities that are best positioned for success. This reprioritization of titles and resources means a few teams will be realigned to others and that some of our colleagues will be leaving us. These changes are not a reflection of the creativity and skill of the talented individuals at these teams or the risks they took to try new things. I'm just done. I'm done. I don't, it goes on, it's, it's the same thing. Tough decisions, to increase investment, focus on our priority games. Uh, focus on the priority, that's what they always say. They always say, we just need to really refocus on what really matters. And it's one of those things that always makes sense. You say it out loud, it, it makes sense. You don't want to make games that don't sell, so let's, let, I mean, it's the same thing Square Enix the other day. Like, we just, we need to focus on what we know is gonna do well. We gotta focus, we gotta trim the fat. But that line of thinking ignores such an incredible string of misfires from Microsoft. Such an incredible laundry list of dumb mistakes that they have making, of wrong steps that they have taken. They have been bungling this business so badly. And again, I really want to talk about it a whole lot because Xbox One came out of the gate. The reception was so tepid. And then Phil Spencer came in. He, it's this great opportunity to turn things around. They're buying up studios. They're like, we're going to make games now. We're going to make games and it's going to be great. And ever since then, over like a generation and a half, they have had this opportunity to turn things around and they have just not done it. And one of their main problems is they're still just not really making a lot of great games. They're just not. So the idea of flushing a humongous amount of their pool of talent down the toilet right now at a time when they need games more than ever, it's it's absurd. It's it's beyond absurd. Tango Gameworks was founded by one of the creators of Resident Evil. That studio was responsible for The Evil Within 1 and 2, games which were very highly regarded, had a lot of potential that Microsoft just didn't want to do anything with. A while back, Tango Gameworks put out Ghostwire Tokyo, and the reception wasn't like the best, but like they clearly are very talented developers because then they followed it up with Hi-Fi Rush, which was a critical darling. They have proved that they can make great games. They just need to be put on the right projects. And yet, presumably, because Hi-Fi Rush was not a humongous success or something, Microsoft is just, no, just done. Done deal. Dead. Chop it off, throw it in the trash. Let's get on with our day. 
But of course that's frustrating because if Hi-Fi Rush was not much of a success, I'm not really sure what you expect when you create a game. It's not like a huge game, I don't know, maybe medium budget game. And you know, you follow this business model that you created where you release every single game day one on your subscription service so nobody has to buy it. I'm not really sure how they anticipated that that was going to immediately bring them a bunch of money. I think everybody just kind of, we just kind of accepted. I guess that's just, that's part of their thing. They're kind of like Netflix, you know? As long as you stay subscribed, we'll just keep green lighting stuff and you'll just keep enjoying it. Maybe we won't see a direct return on investment for each like individual project, you know, Hi-Fi Rush. It's just kind of, it's a thing that we're just giving away and incentivizes people to subscribe, but like it, it didn't seem like it was gonna return dollar for dollar or more. It wasn't gonna make a big profit. And yet, I, is that what they expected? I don't know. What did they expect? And then Arcane, Arcane Studios, so, so highly regarded, such a rich history. They're so talented, they're so good at creating these huge single player experiences, uh, immersive sims, that, that's kind of like their thing. They're like RPGs, they're adventures, but there's so many different ways you can tackle problems. They have just these really complex systems. They've made so many critically acclaimed games, but then Arcane Austin, Microsoft made them develop a live service, always online cooperative game, and it didn't work. They took this talent, they made them create something that was really just, I mean, of course, like, in ways it was in their wheelhouse, but, like, it was something so separated from the kind of stuff that they used to make and that people have praised them for and come to love them for. Microsoft basically forced them to chase a trend and it didn't work out. They probably wasted hundreds of millions of dollars on it, that's not their fault. That's Microsoft's fault. Again, part of the bigger discussion, they keep doing this. They've bought up all of these studios and they are forcing them to make these games that don't suit them and that the greater player base doesn't actually want on the surface. Yeah, you're chasing trends and it kind of seems from like an investor kind of standpoint, you're making these are the kinds of games that make money, but it's just failing again and again and again. And that's not Arkane's fault. That's Microsoft's fault. And yet now, Microsoft is punishing them by just shutting down the studio. Oh, you made Redfall? Wasted a bunch of money? Well, that is a convenient excuse for us to close down the studio. I mean, you made a game and it didn't sell well, right? That, that's, that, that's on you. That means that you should be punished. We should shut you down. Even though we all know that this is just a convenient excuse. Executives love firing people. They love shutting down studios because it means that they save money in the immediate. Every time they stop spending money on an employee or even a whole entire studio, it means that they just have more money to go around and that money usually gets split up between all of the investors, all of the stockholders. This is why even when companies are seeing great success, raking in billions of dollars, they will still fire people. They will still shut down studios because that means that their bottom line will look even better. They will get even bigger bonuses. And seeing that Microsoft is cutting ties with such a tremendous pool of talent, when they need that talent more than ever, when what they need is games, nope, they're just axing them all just so they can make a little bit more money right now. It's unconscionable. It's it's obviously cruel, like it's just cruel to all of the people who are being fired, but then even from a business standpoint, it's just such a dramatic waste of potential. They're shooting themselves in the foot and they are really damaging their reputation. The whole Activision Blizzard deal finally went through. It took years, but Microsoft now finally owns all of these even bigger, huger, crazy catalog of studios trying to convince us that they are a good home for these studios. They're a really good home for these IPs. And now they are gutting a ton of their first party studios. And you know, Phil Spencer has been awful quiet through all this. Not, not really sure where good old Uncle Phil is. 
But we do know that he's gonna get a big fat paycheck at the end of all this, just like all the other executives and investors. And I'm willing to bet that he will continue to not say anything about any of this because what's he gonna say? <laughs> you know, like, what's he gonna say? I I'm not gonna start blaming the guy for everything. Um, I don't know exactly what's going on. It could be his hands are tied and there's nothing he can really do about this. I don't know, but I will say that all of the goodwill that we all had for him, I think that is officially, officially dried up. I don't want to admit it. I thought the guy was cool. I think maybe he is still cool. Again, maybe his hands are tied, but all of this going on, not a word from him, and knowing that he is going to benefit from it tremendously, well, all right, I guess that's all I'll say on that for now. I know I very recently made this analogy about Ubisoft, but like, Xbox is also really starting to feel like a sinking ship. It really is. It feels like they are in free fall. They have no idea what they're doing. They have no idea what games they should actually be making. They have no idea how to fix this mess that they have created. I mean, I know I already did a whole video on this, but how could you mess up Starfield so bad? How could you mess it up so so badly. Oh, that studio's not getting closed down now. No, not that. Never mind. Let's go. Let's go. See you later.